Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at an Italian canister filter. And this lad is the CK Whale 500. This is the biggest version in this particular range and it's actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be. I think it's maybe it's just because it's called Whale. I expected them to be like really big filters. It's quite a slimline, stylish sort of a thing. It's not exactly the monster I thought it would be. Big thank you to Ross who sent this for me. And I'll give you a few facts and figures before I pull this to bits and show you how it comes set up. Although there is most of the guts missing. And I'll also go into how I would set it up and show you how much media fits in and explain a little bit about the media and so on. Your entirely free to set it up how you want but I always try and set these filters up to provide a full cycle that's a processing of ammonia nitrite and nitrate here's the facts and figures from the manufacturer the CK wheel 500 is suitable for tanks between 300 liters and 500 liters and in America speak that is 80 liters to no it's not 80 liters <laughs> 80 gallons to 135 US gallons. Sorry, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos. <laughs> yeah, we use liters, you use gallons. Uh, the entire volume of this thing is 8.5 liters or 2.25 US gallons. And the actual part that holds the filter media and the foams is seven liters or where is it at Imperial? Two US gallons. So flow rate is 1300 liters per hour, which is pretty good. And the US equivalent of that is 390 US gallons per hour. Anything else? Oh yes, the power consumption is 18 watts. And that's the same whether you're in the UK or America. <laughs> Okay, hopefully you'll be able to see that. That is an illustration on the back of the box. That's the bottom of the filter. That's the top of the filter. So the water comes down through a tube or through an opening to the bottom of the canister and then rises up through the trays. So it's a simple bottom up filter. Now normally this would come with two forms. One is 20 PPI, one is 10 PPI. And then you've got some filter media, more filter media, which I think I think that middle one would actually be some sort of alpha grog. It says lightweight ceramic, but it looks very much like alpha grog. And then you've got another 20 ppi foam, and then you've got some ceramic rings. Unfortunately, everything from here up over is missing out of this filter, but I just thought I'd tell you what would normally be the setup. Now, because the filters in this series belong to other people, I don't fill them up and run them generally, unless it's like a little internal thing or something that I can quickly clean out. So it's good that Ross has written in the covering letter that he put in that he did run the filter for a few days and it is impressively quiet, more so than my 407. And size-wise, this is more or less the same as the 407. So this offers you a different option to the 407, but does it hold more media than the 407? The Fluville 407 holds just under three kilos of media which isn't really much considering how tall that 407 is. You know, I mean, it's pretty much equivalent to that. Uh, just not sure on its actual filtering capabilities. Right, well, we'll take a look at that now. So on the top here, we've got the normal in and out pipes, and we've got the release here to take that off for when you remove this to clean it. That's pretty standard. If you notice, there's no priming button or plunger or anything on the top of here, and that's because it primes itself by drawing water out of the tank. There is a fitting on the Shepherd's Crook thing that goes into the tank. Unfortunately, I don't have that. You can look that up in the links that I'll put in the video description. Now, like most canister filters, it's got four clasps. Instead of operating from the bottom, you know, like most clasps do, in fact, like pretty much all clasps do, on canister filters, this operates from the top and it's exceptionally easy to release it. There you go, that is a very convenient way to get in and out of this filter. 
so easy to operate and the fittings actually feel very good as well try and get a close-up on that they're very thick very well made that's well made this is well made as well it's going to be really easy to keep clean because it's so smooth and sleek uh, I love the design of this filter okay let's take a look in here but before we do I'll just show you that that's where the water is drawn out by the pump and what I really love about that is it's got slits on there that prevents any of the filter media being drawn up therefore there's no need for a plate on the top of here like a, a grid that is a really simple solution and to be honest the Italians normally come up with solutions that are way more complicated than they need to be but that is so simple I absolutely love it however when it comes to the way that the water feeds in and down to the bottom of the tank it actually comes out of the side of the pump head here and I'll show you where that goes now it's really strange so the water comes down from the side of the pump head and it actually goes down here and it, it can swill all the way around the outside of these trays and incidentally these trays fit together exceptionally well and obviously you can see what I filled it with so I'll just get those out and then I'll explain what the water goes through before it gets to the pump and spat back to the tank that's the bottom of our canister as you can see there's nothing fancy in the bottom of there and really there's probably not enough space to put any sort of like old ceramic rings or anything in there it's pretty much unnecessary and you're gonna have very little space to do so if you did want to put something in there I would suggest the old style Eheim mech that's probably the only thing it's gonna fit in there because of the size they're very small ceramic rings that'll help to catch a lot of the heavy muck that comes in from your tank so water starts so water goes down to the bottom of there and then rises up through the trays and this is the only thing that actually came with this filter from Ross that is your 10 ppi foam and that is your 20 ppi foam Let's see if I can get a close up on there so you can see that that one would be kind of described as coarse that one would be described as medium and because they fit in there so well right up to the top I'm not going to put a fine pad in here because by the time the water gets through both these thick pads I would say the vast majority of the fine muck will get caught in here if it doesn't it'll go through the filter and get caught second time round no problem having big thick foams and kind of dispensing with the the fine pad you know as long as you've got nice thick foams and that's a pretty deep tree it's approximately 2.5 inches or what's the usable space in there maybe 65 millimeters so that's our bottom tray then we've got three trays of media in this case I've used the biohome ultimate because we're aiming for a full cycle and each one of these trays will take over a kilo so because we've got one two three trays of media in total it gets approximately 3.5 kilos and I didn't write down what that was in pounds so I'll put that along the bottom of the screen for you guys in the US now stack that on there okay so there you can see the you know makeshift tube thing that the vast majority of the water goes down to get to the bottom of the tank that's a pretty simple idea and really because it's all molded into the design of this thing there's nothing there to break I quite like that idea it's something I've never seen before but I like it and if anybody in the UK is familiar with Martin from Homes Under the Hammer that's exactly what he would say as well it's very unusual but I like it also another point of interest is in there we've got a guide that goes all the way down it's like a, a little plastic fin that goes all the way down there that goes just inside of here so it acts as a guide to get these trays down nicely and it also allows you to see exactly which way around these trays need to go so there's no messing about with it you know they can only go in one way basically foams oh. 
nearly put it in the wrong way. <laughs> media. 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 As you can see, the lip on the top is pretty big. And when you put the tray on top of there, like so, it creates a really good seal all the way around here. That will prevent bypass. So all the water going down to the bottom is gonna come back up through the trays. Unfortunately, the sides of this are opaque, so you can't tell if it's fitting in perfectly, but if it isn't fitting in perfectly, you can't get the top on. It's looking good, yep, yeah. good. Good. These are some of the strongest clips that I've seen on a canister filter. And really there's no there to break or go wrong. I like this one. Right, then a few facts and figures based on how we've set it up and my perspective of what size tank this would be suitable for. So it's got th roughly 3.5 kilograms of Biohome Ultimate in there. And for a normally stocked tank, we would say one kilo or 2.2 pounds per 100 litres or 26 US gallons. So 3.5 kilos of media would make this suitable if you were looking for a full cycle for a tank of roughly 350 litres or around 92 US gallons. That's for a normally stocked tank, like a normally stocked tropical tank. If you had a heavily stocked tank, so say you had cichlids, discus, a predatory fish or a marine tank so that would kind of halve those figures so for the UK audience 350 divided by 2 I shouldn't know that but it's 175 litres so for a heavily stocked tank I would recommend that you would get one of these for a tank up to 175 litres or 46 US gallons that's still pretty good it does hold more than the equivalent filter, the nearest one to this, which would be the Fluval 407. So you've got a real choice there. I don't think either of them come with spray bars, but they do come with all the other fittings. They're roughly the same size. Uh, I think they're roughly the same running costs as well, and more or less the same um, turnover um, output as far as the litres per hour go, or gallons per hour. The price of these varies quite a lot because they're not a widely available filter and normally the first place I go to to put a link for you guys is Amazon but on Amazon UK they were actually pretty expensive I'll still put the link because the prices do go up and down on there but the cheapest place I think in the UK I found them was on eBay so I'll put the link there I think at the time of making this video the 500 was round about 120 English pounds which to me is a pretty good buy especially considering how well made this thing is I do really like this one as you can tell uh, yeah so as far as form function how much media it holds and according to Ross the fact that it's very quiet this is one that I would recommend but if you are running one of these or have previously run one of these on your tank please by all means put how you found it in the comment section. That helps other people immensely because obviously I can't run all these filters and you know give you detailed information about them. The people who can are the people who've ran them and that's why that comment section below the video is so important. So please if you've used one of these put your report down there and just interact with people you know. I love it when people help each other because I can't monitor the comments. I've got thousand and summit videos and there's comments on a lot of them coming in every day I just cannot keep up however if you do want to get in touch with me my phone number is in the video description and also in the pinned comment as well as my email address if you're in the UK please phone me because I get a nation of emails don't text I don't use text at all the less I look at my phone the better it's literally for answering phone calls and downloading podcasts <laughs> uh, it's not exactly a multimedia device this thing is a weapon of mass distraction so the less I look at it the better but however 
I, I take phone calls all the time, so that's not a problem, you know. If you've got a filter that you want me to take a look at, please go back through the series just to check that I haven't done it already, and by all means get in touch with me. The media that goes in is at my own cost, and the return shipping back to you, obviously within the UK, is at my own cost as well. So all you've got to pay for is the cost to get it to me. And that can be as fast or as slow as you want. But please don't just randomly send filters because I have covered quite a lot of filters and I do have other videos that still need to be edited on other filters. So check with me first. If it's something I haven't done, I will take a look at it and upgrade it for you, no problem. Thanks for watching. Check out the video description or the pinned comment. That does have a lot of extra information and the important links in there as well. If you want further information, there's a link to the Filter Pro site where you can get the, the media and forms and so on. And there's also a Q&A page on there as well, which answers a lot of questions which I get asked on a daily basis by people who've watched the videos but haven't noticed the Q&A page. That, that, honestly, that'll answer 95% of the common questions that I get asked. So check that out and save yourself some time because I can't always get to emails quickly. Thanks for watching. See you next time.